I gave you the scenario of uh, uh, this this prop I used to use is uh, uh, like a Coke bottle, the old school Coke bottles, and you take an ink pen cap and you pour inside, you put inside the bottle. So uh, I saw this on the movie. Uh, the guy asked, it was a uh, Eddie Murphy movie, and the, and he asked, he says, take, he said, can you take the pen cap out without touching the bottle? The guy's like, what, are you kidding? And so another uh, officer in the movie came by. He says, oh, yeah, that's easy. So he just took, he said, just take a pitcher of water and you pour in the bottle and eventually the pen cap will rise out. So the bottle for our example today would be us. Bottles are made out of sand, right? We're made from clay. Works out perfect, right? The pen cap is that measure of faith. The water would be the word. Right? Because the scripture says the, the water is the word. That's, that's actually a scripture in the Bible. All right, so if you just poured a little bit of water in the bottle, it's the pen cap coming out. If you half fill up the bottle, it's the pen cap coming out. But you got more water in the bottle than you had before. Right? That's how, that's how we roll, right? I got more word than I had before. I was only listening to... Uh, reading a U-verse scripture every day. One scripture every day. Now I'm reading seven. I'm at another level. I mean, I wasn't reading at all. God, you should be happy that I'm reading seven. Like you're doing him a favor. Right? Or you might be going to another, I'm reading like a chapter a day. Is the goal for you to measure how much you're reading to how much you weren't reading? Or is the goal for you to measure how much you're reading to what you need for that faith to come out? The scripture says be filled with all the fullness of God. Uh, uh, in Psalms 23, David said, my cup runneth over. So what, what, he, what he did was he got so much in him, it, it filled him up to overflowing. What, did the, what happened with the pen cap? What happened to the pen cap? When it's overflow, it comes out. The scripture says this, if you buy me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, when you, when you listen to stuff like that, we're in the natural. We're going, I can ask what I will and it shall be done. That's retarded. But when I use the scenario of the, the bottle, uh, I'm, I'm a visual person. So I, I had this large vase of, and, and, and I filled it with water. So I took the bottle with the pen cap and I just submerged it in the water. When it, when it started falling down in the water, all of a sudden the water in the, the, the vase did what? It went inside the bottle. And then what happened to the pen cap? It came out. I right, so the vase would represent God. Right? And the water, of course, is his word. So the scripture says if you abide in him, and then the water that went in the bottle and my words abide in you, it says you can ask what you will and it shall be done. Because now you're, the words that are coming out are faith-filled words. See, so when you submerge yourself in God and his word, and then that word starts to get into you, it fills you up to a point where that measure of faith that's in you starts flowing out with those words. Now they're not just regular words, they're faith-filled words. So now you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Because the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak. In Matthew 12, it didn't say just what's in your heart you're going to speak. What's in there in abundant. So, so if you just read a you verse scripture, or we'll, we'll give you the chapter. We'll give you the chapter. Chapter take you all the two minutes to read. I'm just making y'all think because y'all be, a whole chapter takes you about two minutes. Not even that, depending on the chapter. If it's Psalms, <laughs> Psalm 23, come on, it's like six verses. That don't even take you, hopefully it don't take you two minutes. Well, it depends on your education, it might. <laughs> but just hope it takes, you know, a few seconds. All right, so, so you read that chapter, right? But you abundantly read, I don't know, we'll, we'll just give you something, Sports Illustrated. What's coming out your mouth? Sports Illustrated. Not the six verses you read. What you take in in abundance is what's coming out. If, you, if you're watching the news 24-7, and you read two chapters of the Bible. What's coming out your mouth? With the news, because that's what you're taking in, in your heart in abundance. So, and then you say, but I said what the word said. How come it didn't come to pass? Because it wasn't filled with faith. 
Because you didn't take enough word in to pull that faith out. Okay, now, so we talked about, because this is the keys, we talked about you have a measure of faith, but we don't want the, we don't want the dwelling there, we want it to come out. So we said, you know, the word is what brings it to the surface. But faith just on the surface is not enough. It has to be activated. But the scripture says, faith worketh by love, Galatians 5, 6. Right? So it has to, love is what activates faith. It, 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 it energizes it. It gets it going. Okay, but then we don't want to just activate it. We don't want it just on the surface, like, temporarily, like it just came out that day. Because the scripture says, the just shall live by faith, right? Of Romans 117. So it's a faith life, not faith moments. You know, it's not, okay, I got this measure of faith. I'm dealing with this situation. I'm going to get some word. You know, I need to be healed. I just need to be healed. So you get the word in, and all of a sudden, the faith comes to the surface, right? And... And you, you're, you're so uh, in love with God, you know, you're worshiping God. So your faith is activated in this moment and you get your healing. So then you go, Phew. cool. Um, and, and then you relax. So, so the faith is temporary. So you're not living by it. It's just a faith moment. It's not a faith life. Well, the way you live by faith is you act on faith on a consistent basis. You know, you just, you, you act faith, you know, you live by faith. Not faith moments, it's a faith life. And that's what keeps uh, uh, faith living or activated, right? So you got it. the measure that comes to the surface by the word that's activated by love that lives when you act on it, right? Because I, I have a, I don't have a moment now, but I have a key to our car and I could be sitting here for the next hour talking about this key starts the car. I believe this key starts the car. This key will start the car. I'll be here for the next three days unless I take the key and put it in the ignition and turn it. I was taught uh, years ago, uh, actually when I first started playing basketball I wasn't taught this, but I was taught a uh, triple threat. You know, toe, knee, elbow, reach in the net. Now, I could believe that, but it's not, it doesn't come alive until I do toe knee reach in the net and the shot go in. Once the shot go in, I go, oh, wait a minute, I think I got something at work here. I'm going to keep doing it. If I, miss the, if I keep missing the shot, I'm not doing triple threat. I care less about triple threat. It's like, it ain't working because I ain't making the shots. And I had a young man, I was, I was, uh, his dad asked me to take him to the playground to shoot. Uh, took him to the playground uh, back where we live. And so I'm trying to show him how to shoot basic layups, you know, just in front of the rim. And he's doing something crazy, something. I don't know what he's doing. So I said, did you hear what I just said? Nah, but, but I just want to do this. I said, tell you what, no problem. Like three feet from the basket. Three feet is really you're right in front of the basket. So I said, uh, make 10 in a row. You make 10 in a row, you can shoot the way you want to shoot. If you don't make 10 in a row, you're going to shoot the way I told you to shoot. He couldn't make nothing. <laughs> so I showed him this drill, something that uh, Bernard King showed me years ago. Basically, you hold the ball out to the side, out, out far. You bring it across your body, and then you bring it back to you. It puts your elbow in, because your elbow in makes your shot go straight. Elbow out, you shoot out here. You want the basket to go this way. So I showed him the drill. I said, just hold the ball out, go like this, shoot this way. And then I showed him the left hand, do the same thing. He started making shots. Big Kool-Aid smile on his face. Then he just, he was on the route. <laughs> he, he just knocking him down. He, he, I said, what, what's happening now? Okay, I'm going to do it your way. Why? Because it worked. So, so, so this is what I did. I read that scripture in Mark 11, 22, but 23 and 24 says, uh, if, you, if you have faith and you shall not doubt in your heart, you can have whatsoever you pray. If you, if you believe and shall not doubt in your heart. I was like, have whatsoever I pray. If I pray, if I believe, I shall not doubt in my heart. So let me try this. It's just simple. Nothing supernatural, spooky. I was just like, this is what the Bible say. I'm going to try it. It worked. I've been doing it ever since. It was, not, no divine revelation. Nobody came through the, the, the ceiling. No lightning bolts. Nothing. It was just basic. Let me see. I'm going to try this. See if it works. And then I just kept doing that. I was like, oh, let me try this one over here. Let's see if that works. Hey, try this one over here. Let's see if that works. And I just kept going through the word, trying it. And it's, it worked, so I believe it. So, like, what I'm talking about now, I'm talking about it because I believe it. Like, I've seen it happen. Like, I believe that you could be healed. 
because I seen it. I seen my knee moving. I can move it. I was, I was supposed to, I told you a story the other week where I felt that I got to the point where nobody could stop me, but I went back to the hood to prove to authenticate my game. Dumbest mistake I ever made. But then I got hurt. I fell, slipped, got hurt, and I could just take my knee and I could move it. And I had six days before a tryout. So I was like, man, I said, I can, you know, but I worked hard to go to this tryout. I said, but I can't use the, the injury as an excuse. Really, I had a legitimate excuse. I probably tore something. They don't, now it's everybody talking about ACLs and all that. I ain't know all that back then. I just prayed. I got to the tryout. While I was playing, no, my knee didn't bother me at all. When the game was over, like each day, we, we played like maybe two or three times a day at this camp in, in Atlanta. Every time I, I finished, I was in excruciating pain. While I was playing, it's like I had another, because I prayed for, I said, God, could you just give me a knee? You know, like I need help. And no problems. I've never had surgery. Well, I actually had surgery when I broke my patella, you know, maybe 10 years later. But for that injury, I never had surgery. I don't wear knee braces. I don't do none of that. God healed me. So I believe it. I just tried it. It, it worked. I believe it. We're moving out here. I'll give you this last example. Uh, so the Lord told us to come out here in the last minute. Uh, the, the, the place that we was at, the, the pastor shifted his focus at the last minute. So we basically was coming out here by faith. So I told my wife, I said, we came out here, scouted. We found... Uh, I found two apartments, depending on what job she would have took. So I said, babe, I got good news. I said, uh, I said, I secured the apartment. I said, but I got bad news. I said, we ain't got the money. I said, I paid all the bills. I, this is my habit. I just paid all the bills ahead of time. Paid the mortgage, paid everything. I said, I wasn't thinking that we got to move. I said, so, but you know what? If it's God, I said, it'll be taken care of. I said, so, so what we'll do is accept all the job offers that you got. Because she was getting a lot of job offers. I said, and so if we don't get the first one, then we'll just go to the second job offer. I said, but I secured the apartment. The day before we were supposed to come out here, we're eating. Some, some folk came by to eat. Uh, they knew we were eventually leaving. So we had a, a, a dinner. And I, we, I didn't tell nobody nothing because I was like, if it's God. See, if I tell somebody, then that ain't God. That's me hinting. So, y'all know faith don't come by hinting, right? All right, so, so, so I said, I ain't going to hit nothing. So nobody's going to know anything. And so now this is Saturday. We're supposed to leave Sunday. No, I think we're supposed to leave Monday. So Saturday, we finished eating. So I'm like, we got to go to church the next day. I said, well, hey, y'all, we got to go. It's getting late. Appreciate it. You know, they was giving little different testimonies and stuff we didn't hear about. Folk was crying. But it's time to go. So, so, so I was like, well, it's time to go. We got to go to church tomorrow. So one of the guys said, we can't leave yet. I said, well, why not? He says, well, the Lord just told me that you guys have a pressing need and we need to pray about it. I was like, I ain't telling nobody. So since he said that, I told him, I said, well, actually, we're supposed to move. But I was like, uh, but we don't have the money to move. Exactly what, is it, what I told him. So he, his next statement was, he was like, oh, we ain't got to pray about that. He said, we don't have to pray about that. He said, I got 500. And the other person said, I got 500. The other person said, I got 500. They covered the rent. And I didn't know when you move to another state, you need a down payment for your electric. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've been in, you know, we've been in homes for so many years. I, I mean, I ain't know. <laughs> so <laughs> when I first moved to Ohio from New Jersey, I just moved into an apartment. So. Uh, that it covered that too. It covered the down payment for the electric that I didn't even know about.